very well. Welcome to the Real Tarot 1123. Uh, this is going to be a, a reading for my movie star Monday. And uh, I have uh, decided to do this reading for Lee Thompson Young. Um, now he has acted in a few, you can look him up, you know, the, all the details and credentials are there. But what caught my eye about this young man is, oh my God, he is such a good looking, fine young man. Um, and uh, he died way too young. So he was born on February 1st, 1984, and he died on August 19th, 2013. And he died when he was 29 years old. And I couldn't believe that it's almost been like nine years since he's passed, right? Uh, 2023 would be 10 years since he passed. Like, I can't believe it. I remember just recently catching a glimpse of one of those TV shows or whatever, where I thought I saw him and I was like, he's a good looking young man, right? Uh, he would have been uh, 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 38 years old now and uh, um, very, very unfortunate. Um, the only thing I know is that he committed suicide and oh my God, he's got the most gorgeous eyes and a really beautiful smile. Um, I don't, I couldn't tell you right off the bat um, every single movie or uh, uh, TV show that he's done. But I remember just recently, maybe a couple, two, three weeks ago even, I had seen this, I, I didn't see the whole episode or whatever. I think it was Rizzoli and Isles or something or one of those old ones that you know, they replay and I caught a glimpse of this guy and I was like, he's a good looking kid. And I was thinking, oh my God, he's he's uh, going to go far in his career. I didn't even realize at that time that he was passed. And then I was kind of wondering, okay, movie star Monday, what shall I do? And then I saw his picture saying that he died young and I was like, what? Unbelievable. But anywho, so, you know, the usual, I didn't do too much of research at all. Um, I just know that he committed suicide and he died via a gunshot wound uh, or rather committed suicide by gunshot. So uh, we can take a look and see what's going on. Like I said, uh, he was, his birthday is February 1st, 1984, and he died on August 19, 2013. So he's an Aquarius and he died in the Leo season. I have uh, concluded that his sixth, seventh, and eighth houses were very, very active for him. So let's take a look. I just want to make, give a quick shout out. I'm not gonna say who it is, but uh, a really wonderful member of the real family who I have come to see as a friend. <laughs> uh, she, I just received a, a uh, package in the mail. I mean, I had to go collect it from a mailbox and I didn't even open it until just now. I picked it up earlier in the afternoon because I was busy being frustrated by Apple software, <laughs> uh, you know, trying to figure out my videos. I film everything and then all of a sudden, poof, it's gone. So struggle with that. I filmed another video uh, just now, an hour and 15 minutes. So this happened twice to me already today. So hopefully this one is getting recorded. If it isn't, I, I'm really going to lose it. So anywho, I was piddling around with it and just being very, very frustrated. Couldn't find it. It recorded fine, but I went to replay it and all of a sudden it shows up as 0 0.00 minutes. I'm like, oh, all right. Anywho, and I opened the package and she sent me these beautiful hairbands. I don't know. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Wait. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven hairbands. And I like this one. I just wore this because I'm wearing something beige. I'm going to wear all of them uh, in the videos henceforth. And uh, of course, I'm going to call her and also thank her in person. But uh, there's one that she sent me that's really gorgeous. I, I think I'm going to um, wear that on, uh, I don't know when. Uh, I don't know when. One of the live streams I will wear it. It's beautiful though. Um, so anyway, thank you so very much. I do appreciate you for sending me this gift. Uh, um, well, I suppose I may as well uh, mention her name, right? Uh, Gypsy Girl sent this to me. So thank you so very much. Um, it's just beautiful. This is the one that is absolutely stunning, y'all. I, I don't want to wear it right now. I'm going to do a video and then I'll wear it on that or a live stream and I'll wear it on that. It's just gorgeous. I love it. I love all of them. Thank you so, so very much. I do appreciate you. 
um, and I certainly wasn't expecting <laughs> So thank you so much. Anywho, so let's get started. Um, I haven't yet called. I'm going to call her after I finish this recording. And, you know, I hope this thing is recording, y'all. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm like so, huh, I'd be pissed if it went recording. At least here, see, the number shows it is. It's showing that I'm 5 minutes, 25 seconds into this recording. I just hope that it uh, records, right? I'm going to... All right, so let's get into this. I stopped the intro and then I started a fresh recording for this. So hopefully it's all going to work out fine. So here we have Neptune. So Neptune rules uh, Pisces and it talks about confusion, illusion and dreams. Very interesting that we should get Neptune here. Um, because when we talk about confusion, delusion, and dreams, it does talk about a lot of issues with regards to, I don't know, maybe, am I doing, this? okay. Um, it's, it's also symbolic of, uh, mental health disorders because it's like, um, confusion. There's a lot of confusion in the mind, right? We don't know what we're thinking. We don't know if we're thinking the right things, you know, a lot of confusion, illusions. We have a lot of illusions, you know, uh, Things are not as they appear. Things are not as they seem. That sort of a thing. And uh, dreams, right? Um, a lot of... Uh, um, I want to say... We are dreams as well, right? So let's go further and see what's going on with him. Lee Thompson Young. Such a good looking man too. Now we have Mercury. Am I surprised? Not at all. Mercury again talks about mercurial energy and think about it mercury what is mercury it's 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 very fluid it's very mercurial quick to change right quick to change directions can't hold it steady can't keep it silent can't kind of keep it anchored that kind of an energy and am i surprised not at all then we have venus okay venus as we know it does uh, talk about um, all things beauty all things artistic uh, endeavors it also talks about um, your, uh, um, um, how you perceive yourself, right? Like your physical self, uh, art, uh, talents, uh, all that by which you can create wealth, uh, prosperity and success comes from. Okay. Now he is an Aquarius. So one, two, three, four, Taurus is his fourth house, uh, because Venus rules Taurus. And then you have Libra. Uh, Libra is his uh, ninth house, hmm. fourth and ninth. So fourth house talks about emotions, home, mother, family, roots, affairs at the end of life, etc. And ninth house talks about father, distant travel, higher education, intellect. So I'm not at all surprised. He was very, very much a uh, lot of emotional struggles. Okay, um, a lot, and, and as far as his his. Um, at the end of his life, if you will, when his time was, you know, he had a lot of emotional trauma, a, a lot of emotional ups and downs and upheavals and a uh, lot of emotional uh, instability with regards to, you know, his family, his mom, his father and that sort of a thing. So he may have felt that he was alienated, not just from his mother, but from his father as well. He may as well, uh, he may have he may have felt that he couldn't connect with them. See, I'm struggling to speak too. Um, well, you can say, well, what's new about that, Kirtana? But I'm just saying, um, it's almost like he couldn't express himself. He couldn't uh, communicate with them. He couldn't make his feelings known to them very well. That sort of a thing, right? Uh, he might have felt he, they didn't understand him or they wouldn't understand him. Very unfortunate. Then we have Taurus. Oh my goodness. Fourth house, mother, okay. So it's saying Venus, fourth house, mother. So I think mother, attachment to the mother is a little bit more than to the father. Or a mother figure. He was, he had a lot of confusion, a lot of uh, um, back and forth mercurial uh, way of thinking with about his mother. Uh, also, maybe he wasn't sure, maybe the relationship wasn't that, and, and then we have Capricorn who is ruled by Saturn. So I don't know about his personal life, uh, but I wonder whether he felt very restricted, either he had a very strict mother or he didn't have a, uh, that steady influence in his life. 
but Capricorn uh, is his 12th house. So 12th house talks about uh, karma, hidden, uh, you know, your psyche, all that is inside you, um, institutions, uh, intuition, that sort of a thing. So I feel that the mother energy would have been a lot, a, a big part of his life, either contributed to his success or not one way or the other. Okay. So then um, to, to do, which one do I want to take? I don't want to do the dark cards all the time because that's very, I'll just do this guy. <clears throat> you know, actually, let me do this because I haven't used this in, <clears throat> in, a, in, a, in a bit. Very unfortunate. Such a good looking guy too. I was shocked when I saw that he passed young. I was like, what in the hey, hey, hey. So we have the moon card right uh, under the, um, right on top of the, the Neptune card, now the moon card here is symbolic of uh, a Pisces card. And so you have Neptune. So yeah, a lot of, okay, hang on. This is very interesting, very interesting. Feeling very caged, his emotions, feeling very caged. Pisces is the second house how he valued himself, his talents, his ability to express himself. He also felt very emotionally caged, very mentally and emotionally caged, like he couldn't express himself, that he couldn't get out of his head. A lot of emotions, very, uh, um, very uh, uh, not stable emotionally not very stable not at all surprised all right then we have three of pentacles on the mercury card so three of pentacles does talk about uh teamwork collaboration craftsmanship that sort of a thing maybe he was also at a at a spot in his career in his professional life where he felt that he was not secure uh in terms of his uh, his career his talents that sort of a thing so he might have felt a little bit insecure too and he's like you know i'm feeling very mercurial why you know i'm i'm unable to understand and grasp uh, maybe he might have got uh, got uh, uh, didn't get a couple of contracts a couple of jobs or uh, somebody must have been a little harsh in terms of his uh, criticizing his talents or whatever or maybe he felt in his mind um, it's all his internal struggles felt in his mind that uh, he was not getting the accolades as he should maybe he felt that somebody else was getting more they they didn't do as well as him but why wasn't he getting the you know uh, the accolades so a lot of insecurities with regards to his work and he also felt that he there could have been a moment where he might have thought he wanted to part ways from his agent too uh, because he might have felt either stifled or might have felt like the agent wasn't doing enough for him so that's a high possibility then we have the ten of wands feeling very 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 burdened right under the uh, right on top of the venus card right remember venus rules taurus and venus rules libra so that would be taurus is his fourth house and libra is his ninth house so feeling very very burdened in terms of his relationship i would say with his mother or his father or how he thought about you know the dynamics so far feeling very very burdened so I, I feel there must have been a great sense of why don't they understand why can't they understand i don't want to tell them i don't want to burden them also 
you know, that is a possibility. Maybe he felt that by not sharing this, his personal struggles with the family members, he was actually protecting them and, and he didn't want to burden them with whatever it was that he was going through in his life. So, right? And that's a high possibility too. So, oh, did I just shake that? Where am I bad? I got long legs, y'all. So, <laughs> so, all right. Then we have the eight of cups yeah walking away again this card comes right on top of the taurus card so what that is telling me is taurus is his fourth house walking away emotionally detaching himself from end of life or his his emotions his home his family his family roots emotionally detaching himself walking away from his life he chose to walk away from his physical life so this is clearly stating he, he could have wanted to distance himself from his family his mom feeling overly emotional about it and he was also walking away from life he was emotionally so detached that he was like i'm done i'm leaving i'm going away like so he struggled man i'll tell you then we have the six of pentacles right on top of the Capricorn card. So what is the six of uh, Capricorn card? He's an Aquarius. Capricorn is the 12th house, right? And six of pentacles talks about give and take. It's it's a fair trade. It's a fair bargain. So I do believe, uh, and Capricorn is his 12th house, which is karma, intuition, intu uh, institution, uh, things that are hidden, etc. He might have felt that he has given as much as he could in terms of his karmic duties and responsibilities and he felt that the trade was not fair see if you look at this card i mean these cards are just awesome of course there is no doubting that he felt like no matter how much he did to try to balance the scales it wasn't enough okay however much he did to try to balance the scale give and take okay he he felt like he was coming up short trying to maintain the balance and he couldn't, no matter what he did, no matter how hard he worked, right? He was always coming up short, okay? So he might have felt very, very devastated and felt that no, no matter what he did, no matter how he did, it wasn't enough. So um, this card wants to pop out. And then we have, oh my God. Six of Wands. Okay, so we'll pull out some cards and then we'll go. Oh my God, six of wands, six of swords. Six thousand. His six thousand is cancer. And six thousand talks about work, health, discipline, and habits. I'm going to take these. Wheel of Fortune. The Emperor. Page of Cups. So what this is telling me with the six of wands is as much as he felt that he was not uh, doing enough to balance the scales, he was always, he always felt that he was coming up short, he wasn't good enough. In all honesty, he was always doing right. He was always victorious. He was always, uh, uh, he always got the recognition and the kudos that he deserved. But in his head, he felt like he was coming up short. Then we also have the Six of Swords. Now, Six of Swords does talk about wanting to move away, wanting to uh, emotionally and physically distance yourself and detach yourself from, it's again uh, right under the Three of Pentacles and the Mercury card, wanting to emotionally, uh, physically detach himself, distance himself from all this as he thought it to be chaotic energy around him, his profession. He wanted to leave and walk away. But at the same time, he did have a lot of pride in what he did. So he was probably in a situation where he was like, is it better for me to leave and walk away or should I hang around? He must have been in a situation where he was really contemplating very seriously and very deeply about his longevity in the business, if you will. Then we have the Wheel of Fortune. Wheel of Fortune is a Jupiter card. It talks about power. It talks about movement. It talks about, you know, things uh, revealing, you know, things turning, the clock turning. It reveals things. Well, now, here's the thing. It's right under, let me see if I can hold up, hold up the cards. It's under the Venus card. Okay. So uh, uh, is it any wonder we have two tens? Look. Venus, Ten of Wands and the Wheel of Fortune. So what this is telling me, 
Um, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So a lot of um, as much as he felt burdened, he always hoped that things would turn around. He hoped that uh, things would turn around to reveal that you know um, make things things would turn around. And he would be able to see things in a different light and others would be able to see things in a different light and he wouldn't feel uh, he would stop feeling so burdened uh, with regards to his relationship with his mother or father or the fact that uh, uh, maybe things will turn around and they will better understand where I'm coming from. They'll better know um, what I'm struggling with. Uh, not better know. They will better understand what my struggles are. So he was hoping that things will turn around where they would also turn around and understand and accept what he was going through. Then you have the Emperor card. Now the Emperor card, as we know, is an Aries card. It's, you know, a need to create wealth, a need, uh, having the ability to create wealth, having the ability to make decisions, right? And uh, take responsibility for your actions and your, your career and have the ability to be able to create that wealth. It is right on top of the Eight of Cups card and the Taurus card, which is again his fourth house. So he decided that no matter how much he tried, no matter what he did, as much as he would have been able to earn his money and 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 do good in terms of accumulating wealth via his profession, he felt that he would not reach that level of fame that he always envisioned. See, everybody who gets into uh, Hollywood, I'm sure you ask any one of those actors and actresses, they will say, yeah, I, I want to be the number one or, uh, you know, I want to be Hollywood's uh, hero or Hollywood's, uh, uh, you know, top actress or actor or whatever, the highest paid star. But how many of those people actually get to hit the number one spot, right? So we all know not everybody gets to be number one. But then again, the wanting to be number one was so great. This guy was also quite competitive, I'll tell you. And he took rejection really too hard. He didn't, he he wasn't equip, equipped with dealing with rejection. I mean, he would be like, okay, man, cool, that's fine. That's okay, there are other projects to come. Uh, don't worry about it. I'm fine, man, I'm fine. But internally, he struggled a lot. He really struggled a lot. It, it was very difficult for him to comprehend that. Um, there is a possibility he might have had some rejection at a very young age too and so that kind of stuck with him right there was always this great need to want to uh, prove himself right uh, and then what do we have here the last card here is a page of cups think about it right the page of cups is the most emotional of the pages right and I'm also going to say with the page of cups um, the most emotionally fragile, the most emotionally irresponsible as well, right? So uh, super, super sensitive. So the Page of Cups does talk about, you know, um, the fact that he realized no matter what he did, he wasn't going to be able to balance his scales and he couldn't live up to it. That really kind of made him super fragile in terms of his emotions and the realization that, oh my God, no matter what I do, I'm not going to be able to do everything right. I won't be able to accomplish that level of success. So that really, really, I do believe affected him quite a bit. And even though he tried to look at other opportunities to be able to do something else, something new, maybe go in a different direction within the realm and the scope of his uh, his uh, talents and within the realm and scope of um, the creative world that is Hollywood or movie making per se or televisions or whatever, he realized that, you know what, I'm never going, my thirst is never going to be quenched. Um, there's also a feeling of uh, a sense of bias here. He might have felt that he was overlooked for a lot of roles. Like when you look at some other, maybe he was, uh, he he might have auditioned for a role and they were like, yeah, you're the best, you know, whatever. And then come to find out somebody else got the role and whoever else got the role really wasn't the most suitable. But somehow they got the role. He felt that the uh, carpet was pulled out from under his feet. He felt that there was a, I'm going to say this, I'm going to say this, and I know a lot of people are going to be mad at me, um, but don't, this is what the cards are telling me. He felt that um, there was a lot of favoritism and partiality in Hollywood. And uh, there, was, there were 
reasons why he was overlooked for certain roles um, and read between the lines that's all i'm going to say and before i go any further this is for entertainment purposes only these are my observations and my opinions please do your own due diligence do your own research and form your own conclusions so then we have the four of swords absolutely end of life he was like no i'm done see he was already very fragile and in, in an emotional state of um in a very emotionally in a very fragile state his emotions were very fragile he did have a lot of uh, depression this card right up from the moon card over here shows me he did felt very boxed in his emotions were very caged he couldn't comprehend couldn't express himself uh, couldn't deal with it couldn't figure it out couldn't sift through all of that and on top of that all this drama that's going on and him always being i do believe that he had lost quite a few projects and that kind of get get caught, started getting piled up and that's when it kind of was the last straw so he did he did commit suicide this was a, a, a big and the reason why i say did is because that's followed by the two of swords and the two of swords talks about compromise and make a decision he did choose to uh, commit suicide that was a conscious decision he made and then you have the nine of uh, cups which is a wish fulfillment um, so i believe for this young man it was if i cannot live my life the way i want to live it and clearly i can't then i choose not to live it and i'm going to satisfy if not this then that so that's when he decided to uh, commit suicide but I will tell you, he had been thinking about it for a while too. It's not like a decision. He went to bed and he woke up the next day and said, oh, today I'm going to just off myself. No, he had been thinking about it for a while. I wouldn't be surprised whether he has tried many a time to uh, seek help and unlock the, unlock the, delve into the depths of his psyche to understand what was going on he has definitely sought help but i don't think that help really assisted him because for him it felt like you know uh, oh look look at this card it was like oh you know what yeah it's wish fulfillment um but let's uh, let's try uh, cherries this time next time we'll try apples and another time we'll try blueberries and another time we'll do this and we'll do that and it, it was almost like an experimental process and nothing really helped and he always had hopes that every single time he went and they tried something else that that would offer that would be the key to unlock the the uh, the doors to the deepest darkest secrets and he'll be able to figure it out and he would be able to see you know sunflowers freedom solutions etc but he couldn't because you look at this little shark belly up with his belly slit so it, it, no matter what they tried it, it dawned on him that it was not going to help him come out of that uh, depression it's very unfortunate when you realize that you can't get over it oh my god seven of swords he might have also felt a little betrayed and he might have felt by offing himself he was going to be betraying people and people are going to feel like he didn't he he did wrong by them by offing himself but it's almost like another seven and the seven thousand is leo and this is seven of cups self indulgence uh gaslighting it's almost like he kind of gaslighted himself he was a little bit selfish he did gaslight himself and then we have the nine of pentacles y'all do you see how many how many um, repetitions we have so the nine of pentacles does talk about um uh, financially being self-sufficient to be able to take care of. I think his concern was also if I off myself, who's going to take care of whoever it is that he felt he was, he wanted to be financially responsible for, or he was either be, uh, be able to take care of his loved ones or his family or whatever. So he felt like by offing himself, he would take away that, that source of financial security for them. But he also felt that I'm not enjoying this the way I should. This is not turning out to be the way I wanted it to be. So there was that dilemma, right? Am I living my life for somebody else or what? And then here you go, Ten of Pentacles. 
But however, I will say he did manage to leave some sort of a legacy, financial, some sort of a financial, I don't know, I don't know how much it was or whatever, I don't know, but was able to leave a little bit of security or whatever it is to whoever he wanted to leave that to. And here we go, the four of, uh, four of wands, the bottom of the deck. And the four of wands talks about family, home, uh, celebrations, etc. So I do believe he might have left a little something, some sort of a security for his family. Um, he might have felt that I'm not going to be here to provide everything for them, but at least upon my death, they will have some sort of a stability and security. So, so unfortunate. And, and, and you know what, y'all, I've said this so many times, and we all know depression, mental health is, is a really, really serious, serious, you know, um, uh, thing. And a lot of people don't take it seriously. I don't think the government does enough in terms of for mental health um things uh you know in terms of providing whatever uh and a lot of people say oh you're just upset get over yourself or you know that's sort. but mental health is really serious so many people suffer you know suffer with mental health issues a lot of them don't even talk about it because they are afraid that people will ridicule them they're embarrassed they're afraid etc i'm just going to say if you or anybody you know is struggling with mental health uh, issues please reach out there are any number of organizations um etc that are able to provide you know uh, some sort of a help you know call reach that sort of a stuff you know reach out Please don't feel like you're alone. You're not alone. There are gazette, people from all walks of life, you know. Mental health does not discriminate y'all. Let me tell you, mental health does not discriminate. Mental health doesn't care where, what your sexual orientation is, whether you're male, female, or whatever, uh, whether you're, uh, you know, young or old, or, you know, educated, uneducated, literate, illiterate, whether you're um, red, white, or blue. It really doesn't care, you know. Mental health, regardless of which country, which state, which, which, ethnicity you come from it affects everybody if, if, if like i said it doesn't discriminate so please don't feel like you're alone and there is no need to be ashamed of it at all you know another thing i want to say is with mental health the more you talk about it right so think about it this way the more you talk about it the more you come out and talk to people about it who knows through your experience somebody else would uh, benefit right and they you, you could very well be saving somebody else's life and your own so please don't feel embarrassed please don't feel like it's it's something to be kept secret uh, it's something to be ashamed of it's not it's not anything that you need to be ashamed of uh, it can be treated it can be helped you definitely will be able to overcome your struggles uh, sometimes it happens sooner than later but as long as you are persistent and you reach out and get the support and you will get the support you will be able to overcome it right so the power is in you remember that you can definitely overcome your uh, mental struggles and your uh, issues so please reach out okay and for those of us who who you know uh, may know somebody who's struggling with mental health issues all you have to do is just listen to them right i mean if they pick up the phone and they want to talk to you just let them talk just let them talk uh, sometimes just giving them an opportunity to just talk without judging them without um interrupting asking questions just let them talk you know it that helps too uh, I can tell you my own personal experience, you know, whenever I've had moments, we all go through these moments of we get into a kind of a funky state of mind or a little bit of a depressive state of mind. And uh, I don't want, I'm not having, what the hey, I have a gnat here. Um, I don't, damn it, get away from me. I don't want to have a conversation with anybody uh, if I know that they're going to judge me or they're going to look at me weird or they're going to keep asking questions. I just want them to hush and let me vent. You know, that sort of a thing. And just venting and just letting all the steam out is all you need, right? I know I've gone through phases where I'm like, please don't say anything, just hear me out. I just want you to hear me out. And just, just vocalizing that and just talking about it and letting those sounds escape from your you know heart is all you need right so um so just know that um it's nothing to be ashamed of 
oh yeah, there are moments when I'm so upset with some, you know, hell, you don't get to be my age without having some life experiences. So there have been moments when I've been very, very upset or, you know, this, that or the other happened and uh, it really bothered me and it really upset me. And I was like, what the hell, what the hell type of thing. And then just talking about it is like, oh, okay, moving on, right? The Hermit card. Queen of Cups. Oh my God. Shoot. Oh my God. In the reverse, y'all. King of Cups. Queen of Cups and King of Cups. And you have the Two of Wands. So what this is telling me is the Hermit card again is is a Taurus card, I'm sorry, is a, a, a Virgo card, right? And Virgo is his eighth house, and eighth house talks about will, secrets, occult, death, regeneration, sexual energy, long-term finances, etc. The fact with, the fact that we have the Hermit card followed by the Queen of Cups, Three of Swords in the reverse, then we have the King of Cups, and then we have the Two of Wands. What this is telling me is, I do believe that the family members, his father and mother, have tried to kind of wrap their heads around what happened, why it happened, and they've never been able to figure it out. Uh, and they have been very cognizant of the fact that he was a little depressed, he was a little quiet, but they didn't know also how to help him. Okay, that's a possibility. Now you have the Hermit card, the Queen of Cups, the Three of Swords in the reverse, and then you have the King of Cups. Now Three of Swords just talk about heartache, divorce, depression, surgery, etc. But in the reverse, it also says that finally some relief has come, right? So maybe towards the end, <clears throat> even though they might have known that he had depression, they might have felt that, oh, maybe he's kind of getting over it. And then for him to go and do what he did, they were completely like overwhelmed and saying like what happened i thought he was getting over it i thought he was doing better i thought he had crossed that that hump in his life if you will and then with the two of wands it talks about um waiting to hear i think what has happened here is they might have communicated with him and he might have said yes i'm doing well i'm getting over it don't worry about it i'll be fine and they were like oh okay fine so he's finally doing better he's going to be able to get better uh, you know, um, because he might have misled them. He might have said, yeah, I'm doing well. Or maybe he he didn't mislead them. Maybe when he spoke to them, he was doing well. And so they were also under the impression that he's going to overcome it. And finally, the last minute, he, uh, two days, the last 48 of, hours of his life, he was super, super depressed. And uh, that's when he said, I'm just going to do it. But I feel that they might have, somebody in the family might have said, hey, I'm going to call you tomorrow just to check in on you or whatever. And he said, okay. And in that interim period of time, he did. And they were waiting for either, they must have called him and he must not have answered. And they were waiting for him to call them. And they didn't because I see that they were waiting to hear from him. They were waiting to hear from him and he didn't call them, obviously. So unfortunate, y'all. I mean, it, this is this is such an unfortunate thing and the king of pentacles okay i'm going to say with the king of pentacles um yes it it is very much possible that they might have sent somebody who was either um uh um damn it what, what is the word i'm trying to look for um somebody who was either something to do with an executive kind of a position in the studio or his agency or somebody higher up over there to go check in on him because you have the Queen of Cups, the King of Cups, uh, and the King of Pentacles, and this is very well a uh, Taurus Capricorn or uh, Virgo energy uh, to go check in on them, on him, and I think that's when they found out. Two of Swords again, a lot of twos, y'all. A lot of twos. So there's a lot of you know, uh, waiting to make a decision, compromising, not sure what to do, back and forth, back and forth. 
there's some drama going on besides his mental health which could have been the reason why he committed suicide but there's an underlying issue of a struggle of power i'm going to say that underlying issue is very much related to the king of pentacles and a lot to do with the money and then here you have the seven of wands he did try to protect himself against competition this has something to do with the business end of things there must have been some shenanigans going on which also contributed to his state of mind at that time and he was like this is ridiculous this is crazy so either some shenanigans happened there where he might have lost some money somebody mismanaged money somebody cut cut him out at the last minute and he never expected that uh, to happen uh, and he did try to protect himself and there's something else going on here y'all i can tell you it's almost like somebody might have blackmailed him i'm saying that and he was afraid that that is going to completely ruin him I can't believe it. So we have the King of Cups, we have the King of Pentacles, we have the King of Wands. Now this is somebody who has a medical background, so it could very well be his physician. The only king that hasn't showed up is the King of um, King of uh, Swords. Wow. The High Priestess, Ace of Wands. I'm going to say this, there's a power struggle going on here. Definitely a power struggle with people who are, there's a lot of power struggle. There's a lot of, okay, I'm going to say this. I don't know and I'm saying this very respectfully and even if he was or he wasn't, there's nothing wrong with it. I wonder if somebody threatened to expose him and say that he was gay. Okay, I don't know if he was or not. I mean, I don't, haven't done any research. Or there's a possibility that somebody might have set him up to be in a situation, not out of his choice, forced him into a situation to have some sort of shenanigans going on here. And there was a lot of pressure and somebody must have tried to blackmail him or try to control him and say, we are going to throw it out in the open that you're gay. And that would have completely, he thought it would have completely destroyed his, his uh, career. But in all honesty, there's a high, this high priestess here. Okay. So therefore you see a lot of tools, decision making, compromise or make a decision. And so that's why he was forced to make the decision he did and, and agree to partake of the shenanigans. The high priestess is ruled by the moon, okay? And it talks about a lot of things that are kept hidden. I will tell you this. If he were dating somebody of the opposite sex, I would say this person, there was a lot of secrecy, a lot of stuff that she might have also been doing behind the scenes. I wouldn't be surprised if at one point in time he might have thought that he would have liked to have her as a spouse, but she was just there to use him and for her pleasures. And again, the Ace of Wands pops up. Ace of Wands is very symbolic of the male phallus. And you have all these kings around you. So this was also had to do a lot with same-sex relationships or shenanigans or, um, or uh, escapades, if you will. I do believe this, this. And if he was gay, that's fine. I mean, seriously, who? I mean, I don't hold anything against those people. I mean, whatever makes you happy, man, makes you happy, right? As long as it's consensual, who really cares? It doesn't affect me in any way, shape or form. So I'm not homophobic in any way at all. And if he was good, I mean, so what? Um, but I feel like he was forced into a situation that he tried very hard to get out of and unfortunately couldn't. And that might have also weighed a lot on his conscience because he was afraid of how that might affect his career. And he didn't know what to do and how to turn around. There was also a lot of money involved in this. So I'm going to stop. Um, I hope you all, in, I mean, I mean, I hope you all send me your comments or whatever or put your comments down in the comment section if anybody knows anything else about this fine young man um he's got really beautiful eyes and a very very nice smile at least a picture i've seen on, of him so it's very very unfortunate i mean i was blown away when i was like what he died and he died in 2013 you know um it's so sad 
again mental health y'all and then you throw you know a small thing can tip them off right if they're already struggling with mental health do leave your comments in the comment section if you haven't subscribed already please do subscribe hit the like button hit the bell icon and to all my subscribers thank you so very much i do appreciate each and every one of you and for the uh, those who are visiting thank you for stopping by um stay tuned every mondays i do movie star mondays wednesdays i do wicked wednesdays and every fridays i do live streams 7 p.m central standard time 1900 hours and i it's uh, called lost but not forgotten fridays um so that's that and if you're wanting a personal tarot reading please do visit my website www.therealtarot1123.com it's very easy to navigate um and it'll tell you the different kinds of readings I do and you can put in your information you can pick the date and time that you want the consultation for I do it via zoom um, and all that stuff all this information is there another thing that I do is I do post some uh, videos uh, on my website and that is only for members uh, membership is free your information is never sold please know that rest assured so if you want to even if you want to get a personal reading please go and first register as a member um, again like I said registration is free you register as a member you get an email from my website asking you to confirm or validate your account once you confirmed and validated it pops up on my end so once we do the zoom reading if you pay for a zoom recording I will assign that video to you so that's why membership matters um, also um, uh, the free readings that I do videos I do sometimes you know I uh, I just uh, give it to my members you know there's no need to pay for that uh, so that way you can enjoy that I don't post those on the interweb that's exclusively for my members and if I have any specific uh, you know announcements or whatever I do it there and sometimes the members will be like hey can you do a reading for this so then I do it only for an intimate group of people I don't post it out for and those are all free but on the other hand if you want to uh, get 52 weeks of a uh, week ahead reading a, a tarot reading you subscribe for that that is a paid subscription also uh, 12 months of tarot reading uh, general of course that is a paid subscription you get to pick and choose whichever sign you want um, so anywho um, that's about that I suppose so thank you so very much I do appreciate you thank you for spending your time with me and see you in the next uh, video bye blessed be y'all